Hello, my name is Geoffrey, this is my wife Alison, and we both play gamelan here at St. Luke's under LSO Discovery. I've been playing here since this gamelan arrived in the UK in about 2003, six or seven years. I came to see the church and the renovations here and found a gamelan in the room downstairs, and I thought, this looks wonderful. So I picked up a leaflet that said, interested in playing gamelan? Come to the LSO Discovery gamelan group. And I did. And a year later, this woman joined me. Was it two years later? Two, two years, years later. later. I um, thought it looked beautiful. And I did come to the first concert you were in. And I was in the audience. And I hadn't got a clue what was going on. So when they said, oh, we got that bit wrong, I didn't know. It just all sounded just very different music. I didn't know the music at all. And um, I used to sing in a can't sing choir on the same night. So I said, I'd love to join Gamelan and Jeffrey, but of course I can't because it's can't sing choir night. Then sadly, the can't sing choir uh, changed the night and I had no excuse. So um, I then, I came along as I would consider myself to be much less of a natural musician or, or experienced musician um, than, than Jeffrey. So it was the look that inspired you to come to join the Gamelan? Have you ever heard? I'd heard bits of Gamelan on Radio 3. I was vaguely aware that it was the traditional music of Indonesia. I knew nothing about how it worked, how it was played. And I had no idea there were so many Gamelans in Britain until I started coming here. Um, and when was that you heard the Gamelan on the radio? Uh, every now and again, sort of once every five years, it will crop up. Well, late more, night junction. More often nowadays, but yeah, late at night on Radio 3, there'd be some strange music going on, and I'd stop for the introduction, or the, the post introduction, and they say, That was Gamelan from Java or whatever. And I thought, Well, that's interesting. I must go to Indonesia one day. Little did I know, I didn't have to go so far. So when you studied the Gamelan, um, so, how many people were in the group at that time? I should say, well, we more or less filled up the, um, the Samaradana. That's 20, 24 people. But over the years, it's, it's always fluctuating. People are coming and going. Sometimes we only have a dozen, sometimes two dozen. How, how did you feel playing gamelan with, with those people? I thought it's wonderful. One of the things I love about the music is that it's such a corporate thing, a community mm -hmm. thing. There's no soloist, there's no one person playing and the rest accompanying. You have to listen to everybody else and you have to play as a group. And that's always appealed to me. I like that. Uh, th that appeals to me. I have a very different uh, learning experience from Jeffrey because I say, say I'm not a, an experienced musician. Um, but what I like most about it is that even if you come in relatively new, you can join in and join in the concert. Um, and my working life, I'm very much um, judged as an individual. And here, it's, I really like the fact that it's a, a team effort. And, and when it all comes together and you know the different parts and, and you sort of got it, which to me does not always come naturally, can I say. Um, but when you've got it, it's very satisfying. And of course, it's lovely music. And the audiences, when we've played concerts, are always... You can hear a pin drop, can't oh. you, in the quiet bits. It, it is fascinating how it captures the audience's imagination. And we've invited friends who really didn't know what the gamelan was, and we've asked them if they'd like to come to the concerts. And um, some of them have come more than once. <laughs> and, and, and also, very quickly, as I think because this is a community group, a discovery group, there are people like Jeffrey who, who's worked... Um, as a musician and, and is a very good musician. There are students who, students of music. And then there are complete novices like me, of all ages. Um, and we've, we've made some good friends, mm -hmm. haven't we? And um, some of the novices before, before a concert, there's a lot of emailing and worrying. And it's about, about not letting the team down. You want to get it right so that it works. But when we're just playing for fun, it's deeply relaxing. I think it's good to, to 
learn and work on something that's very, very different from what you do for a living. Do you mm. agree? Yeah. Absolutely. When you're learning a new piece, especially, mm. concentrating on the whole thing, not just your part, but what everybody, <coughs> excuse me, what everybody else is doing, you can't possibly think about anything else, work mm. or shopping or <laughs> paying the bills. You can only think about Gamelan. And within this room, everyone was focused on playing Gamelan together, which is terrific. What, what do you do for a living? I'm a freelance editor, I suppose. I write and I edit and I design things. And I sometimes work with this woman, who's also <laughs> a freelance writer. And um, yes, I'm a writer broadcaster, actually, and specialise in tourism. Although I've never been to Bali, and in fact, we, we are planning to go to Bali, but we will go when we know we, I'm confident enough I could take part in a community group in Bali. I do have to say, I was in a travel conference in Oman once and I got there early with a colleague and we in a posh hotel for the conference so we treated ourselves to some beauty treatments and discovered that all the beauty therapists in this hotel in um did I say Oman it's not mm. Oman it was um it it'll come to me was it no okay oh yes it was it was the country of Oman that's right mm. not Oman in Jordan but the country of Oman and um all the therapists came from Bali. So I get quite embarrassed being massaged. So when my masseur was massaging me, I went, oh, I play in Balinese gamelan. And she said, oh, you live in Bali? And I went, no, no, I actually play in London. And she and the team couldn't believe that British people played their traditional music. And um, I remembered the names of a few numbers we did. And she, she got quite homesick. And I was known for the whole of the con conferences, the woman who plays gamelan. And in fact, she didn't charge me for the massage. <laughs> but I did wonder whether it's like um, a lot of Balinese people arriving in London and telling us that they have a Morris dancing group in Bali. <laughs> but I think, I think they were all very flattered that so many of us in Europe play by know what gamelan is and we play it and we enjoy it. Oh. Wow. Does gamelan or does play gamelan affect your um, your work? I tell you what it has done. I did promote myself over the last few years from the Can't Sing Choir to um, choral singing for fun. In fact, Geoffrey joined the choir as well. because the Can Sing Choir, I said, if I'm coming to Gamelan, then you can come to singing with me. Um, and what Gamelan has, I realize, has done is my timing now in choral music is spot on. I'm, I'm good at musical timing, and I know that that's come from Gamelan. Um, and I think the older you get, the harder it is to learn something new. So learning something new, uh, so different from work, I think helps keep the brain active, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I think it's, it's changed my approach to music. And I've played music, Western style music of all sorts, for 40 years or something. And then discovering Gamelan, the other great surprise, apart from the community thing about it, is how different it is from Western music, how the tuning is sort of variable, and one Gamelan is not tuned the same as another. Mm -hmm. And so many things are very different, and the fact that it's not written down, and you learn it by ear, and so forth. It made me go right back to the beginning and rethink what music is about, how sounds are organized. And you don't have to follow our pattern. You don't use the well-tempered scale. You count differently and so forth. And that's been a revelation. It's made me more open-minded about all sorts of music, I think. I think also it made it harder for me as a non-musician, as it were, who has to pick out a tune with one finger on a keyboard if I'm trying to learn the song. It's taken a long time to realize there aren't bars, it shouldn't be written down, it doesn't have an exact time scale. And re well, what I know about music, I've had to rethink completely for gamelan. And, and it's interesting, when I tell friends, oh, I play gamelan, and I carry in my phone now some music and pictures because it's easier to explain to them what it is. <laughs> um, I used to carry before Digit, you know, this phone, I used to carry a photograph in my wallet to show people, which I did show all the people in Oman, uh, to prove that I did play in a Balinese gamelan. Um, and when I show friends, in er invariably, they, the first thing they say is, which instrument do you play? And you start explaining that it's not like a Western orchestra, 
that actually, as I understand it, to know a tune well, you should really be able to have a go on, you know, the gongs or, uh, you know, all the different instruments. Although, I think we tend to have our favourites, don't, don't we? I think everybody does, yes. Those of us who aren't the, the um, most lithe of members, like, sit at the jagog, sit on a chair, so... Because sometimes when I'm, I'm on the floor, by the time I've stood up, the applause is over. <laughs> so we like the chair on the back row. But also in our, the choir we sing in, I sing soprano, high soprano, which if in Western choral music is twiddly decorative bits at the top. And you sing bass, which in Western music is usually underpinning the whole work. And interestingly, we have opposite roles usually, and by, oh. by preference in gamelan, I like to sit, sit playing jagog at the back, not just because I get a chair that have to sit on the floor, but also I, I gravitated to it, first of all, because I thought you play for your notes, it would be much easier to learn. Then I realised with horror, it's like the gong, it might be a simpler formation, formation but if you get it wrong, <laughs> you throw everybody. So... Um, and when I get it right, I love, I love that feeling of underpinning all the frilly bits that you're doing. I play the fiddly bits. Yes. Um, and if you play fast enough and keep smiling, it doesn't matter if you yes. know notes, because <laughs> nobody knows. But you can't, I have discovered, you can't mime the gongs. 